Thank you for joining us this evening for our webinar series. If you have missed any of our past webinars, you can watch them on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, we will be holding them until the end, but you can submit them anytime via the comments. Today, I'm happy to bring you Alan Bergman with a presentation on chimpanzee caregiver relationships. Alan has a bachelor's degree in zoology from Miami University and a master's degree in primate behavior and ecology from Central Washington University. He has been a caregiver with Project Chimps for two and a half years and has been a facilitator of the Enrichment Committee for two years. Alan was drawn to chimpanzees because of their remarkable intelligence, which is why his main passion is making sure we have enrichment that challenges their minds and keeps them busy. Without further ado, take it away, Alan. Thank you for the introduction, Megan, and thank you to everyone attending this webinar. Uh, I'm excited to share a bit of Project Chimps with you all. We'll start off with just a quick overview of who we are and what we do at this sanctuary. Uh, Project Chimps is a chimpanzee sanctuary located in the Blue Ridge Mountains in northern Georgia. We have over 230 acres of space and were set up specifically to help chimps formerly used in medical research, of whom we currently have 81 in residence. Our mission as an organization is simply to provide lifelong exemplary care to chimpanzees retired from research. We wanna give them the ability to live out their entire lives with as much comfort and happiness as possible. Project Chimps has been around since 2016. Uh, we transport chimps from the New Iberia Research Center located in Louisiana, all the way here to Blue Ridge. We've transported 85 chimps thus far, and we are not done yet. The large trailer that you see here is what we use for these transports, and they can fit up to 10 chimpanzees at a time. We've also used this trailer to help a number of other chimp sanctuaries move chimps to great new lives. This is a photo of our peach tree habitat uh, that the chimps get to explore in. There are a number of buildings that house the chimp groups around the edge of the habitat. This includes four villas, the Cedar Tree, Dorothy, Joe, and Tilly, Chimps Ahoy, and Harmony Villas. There is also a larger building named the McGrath Family Chateau, which can actually house two separate chimp groups at once. Like I just said, we have uh, large groups group villas or buildings that house our chimp groups. These groups range in size from 13 to 18 currently. The, the buildings consist of large enclosed temperature controlled bedroom areas and large porch areas, giving them access to outside as well as the peach tree habitat. Within the rooms, there are all sorts of climbing structures and platforms to keep the chimps active or to provide a nice spot for a nap. We make sure to provide a wide variety of foods for the chimps here, uh, focusing on giving them a completely vegan diet. The chimps get a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. These breakfasts and dinners consist of fruits, vegetables, and their nutritious chow biscuits. And the lunch consists of leafy greens and vegetables. We also give different small foods like nuts, seeds, oats, and much more scattered in their villas and in the habitat to give the chimps the opportunity to forage for their food, an activity that chimps in the wild occupy most of their ac active time doing. On top of all that, many of our enrichment items provide them with an opportunity for a tasty prize as well. Speaking of enrichment, we make sure that the chimps are properly enriched, stimulating their minds, keeping them active, and preventing boredom. We give the chimps at least three different kinds of enrichment every day, two of which will be puzzles of varying difficulties and one which follows a different theme each day, such as stimulating their senses, using technology, or just dressing up in costumes and performing silly dances for their enjoyment. Now that I've given a basic outline of what we do here, uh, let's get to the main subject of this talk, the importance of a healthy chimpanzee caregiver relationship. When you think about chimpanzees, particularly in the wild or ones that you might see at zoos, 
you don't really ever picture just one. That's because chimpanzees are remarkably social creatures. They rely on the groups that they live in for protection, support, and growth. Therefore, it shouldn't be a surprise to know that social interaction is a crucial aspect of a healthy and happy chimpanzee existence. All of the interactions between chimps have effects on the group's social dynamics. For instance, grooming can facilitate a stronger, more affiliative bond between two chimps. An aggressive encounter or stealing food from another can reinforce dominance hierarchies. And performing tool use around others can facilitate social transmission of new behaviors. Everything a chimp does and who they do it around or with can have impacts on the entire group. When we talk about the social groups of the chimpanzees at the sanctuary, we are commonly referring to just the chimps in that group. But since the care staff is around them every day and interacting and providing things, they also hold a certain role in the social dynamics. Obviously, the role is a lot different from that of the chimpanzees. A big factor in social interactions between chimps is physical touch, and our care staff cannot physically touch the chimps. We can touch them with sticks to simulate grooming, but it can't be quite as personal as with two chimps. So we occupy a secondary position in the group. But that doesn't mean that we don't have important roles. The chimps are unable to provide for themselves, so we are the providers of necessities such as food, enrichment, toys, or nesting materials. We also make sure that their living areas are properly cleaned every day. And while we cannot physically touch them, we still provide positive experiences through things like playing chase, tug of war, tickle stick, and I'll explain what that means later on, or just dancing silly dances for them. Uh, lastly, an important role to ease tensions between the chimps is for the caregivers to be an outlet for frustrations. For example, sometimes when the Chimps Ahoy group is getting very riled up, Lindsay, the dominant female of the group, will start threat barking, threat barking at the care staff. She may also throw things at the mesh towards us. This draws the attention of the other chimps away from each other and they gang up to yell at us. And this is a really clever way for Lindsay to negate hostilities among her group mates while also not needing to throw herself into the fray. Another way that we can be an outlet for frustrations is that a lower ranking chimp may be may act aggressively towards us because there are no chimps lower ranking than themselves that they feel safe to do so with. We provide a safe option to release their pent up frustrations on since they know we won't retaliate. This is called displacement behavior and it's common in many species, especially humans. So what are some of the most important reasons for having a healthy caregiver chimp relationship? The most important all-encompassing reason is to establish trust. A foundation of trust has positive effects on all other aspects of a relationship, uh, such as training. A good relationship can make a chimp much more willing to train with you. Having a good relationship with the chimps can have observational advantages outside of your interactions with them too. Uh, identifying the presence of new stress behaviors or injuries relies upon having a good understanding of the chimpanzee's typical behavior and health. Additionally, knowing all of the chimps in the group gives us the ability to understand particular factors in their social dynamics. Trust is at the center of any relationship. You don't feel comfortable around people that you don't trust, and you can't always be your most authentic self uh, either. This can hold true for chimps as well. When a chimp gets to Project Chimps, they're unsure of us and their guard might be up. This can make our jobs more difficult because they might be unwilling to help us help them because they don't necessarily trust us at that point. When the chimp begins to realize that we provide tasty and fun things and that we're not out to do anything negative to them, they begin to be more willing to cooperate with us and to reveal more of their personalities as well. Trust can help with reducing stress behaviors in chimps. These behaviors are things such as rocking in place, uh, hair plucking, or trying to eat things that are not food. As we gain a, a chimps trust, they can understand that we're not out to harm them. 
that we're going to provide them with what they need throughout the day, and that will avoid putting them in potentially harmful situations. This can all help towards reducing the frequency of these stress behaviors. The trust that we develop with the chimps is built on a foundation of consistency. Now, this doesn't mean that we necessarily do everything the exact same way every day, but we make sure that the chimps know what to expect from us. They know that we'll get them their food around a certain time, and they know the kind of demeanor that we'll bring every day. And we'll discuss that a little more later on. While we're using oper operant conditioning to reward correct behaviors during training, uh, the time spent during a positive interaction between human and chimp further reinforces the bond and the trust between them. The more trust a chimp feels towards a caregiver, the more willing that they'll be to participate in the training and less skeptical and the less skeptical they'll be. For instance, one of the chimps here, Precious, uh, is known as a relatively ornery chimp. She also happens to have renal disease, which means that we need to keep an eye on her health by analyzing urine samples. When we were trying to train her for urine collection, she would be her usual cranky self and chose not to cooperate. Fortunately, I happened to have a pretty good relationship with Precious, so I gave it a shot. She was a bit more willing to train with me and quickly learned the behavior. Now, I'm not some expert trainer, and I'm probably not as good as many of my coworkers with training, but that goes to show how having a strong bond with a chimp can be very advantageous. When a chimp is enthusiastic to train with a familiar person and trust them, it can be a bit easier to train for behaviors more quickly, and they may understand what you're asking of them a little better and will have a little more desire to stick around for more training. Now, one of our biggest roles as caregivers is to make sure that the chimps are well taken care of medically. Therefore, having a close bond to the chimps can certainly help us identify abnormal behaviors, illness, or injuries before a layperson might be able to. Many chimps will naturally hide their illnesses or injuries. In the wild, showing weakness could mean very bad things for a chimp, especially if that chimp is higher on the dominance hierarchy. So they naturally try to act as normal as possible. But there are typically small changes in their normal behavior that can help a caregiver identify issues. For example, there was one evening that I was serving dinner to the chimps and one of the females was moving around normally. But we noticed that once she got her food, she laid down on her belly to eat it. We commented to each other on how it was an unusual position for her and she kind of looked silly doing it but we also agreed that we should keep an eye on her throughout dinner to make sure that the change in behavior wasn't due to sickness or injury. Sure enough, next time she came up to get food, we identified a cut on her upper arm. We were able to get her some medication that evening and she healed very quickly from that injury. So since we knew her well enough to know something was off, we could intervene on that injury ASAP. Trust, of course, has an impact on identifying injuries. Sometimes the chimps will just come straight up to us and show us that they have a, a cut or some sort of injury. They might even allow us to take a picture of it or to groom around the affected area to get a better look. This would be far less likely if, uh, if they didn't feel comfortable with us around. They, they would not be showing it to us. They certainly wouldn't let us be getting close to it and take pictures and all that. Now, as far as stress behaviors go, we would definitely love for all of our chimps to display no stress behaviors. But we know that that's not entirely possible. Just like humans, uh, the chimps can carry burdens from past experiences that cause them chronic stress throughout their lives. As former research chimps, many of the residents here may have had such experience that impact them to this day. So understanding the stress behaviors that each chimp shows can help us to identify how they're managing. We can both identify whether a chimp is reducing their stress behaviors, or we can realize when a chimp is displaying more of those stress behaviors, and then we can make changes based on what we believe is causing the uptick in stress. Understanding social dynamics is 
crucial to successfully taking care of chimpanzees. Since chimps are so social, understanding their personalities and relationships with each other goes a long way towards anticipating their needs and behaviors. For instance, Samira is dominant over the twins, Sharice and Buttercup, and she'll occasionally try to steal food from them at mealtimes. Understanding the context of their relationship, care staff is conscious of Samira's positioning when they give one of the twins their food. Even though that won't always prevent Samira from getting what she wants, it will go a long way towards hopefully allowing the twins to get their food. And don't worry, if they don't get their food and they get it uh, stolen from them, we try to get them additional food after that so that they're not going without that food when they get it stolen. Social dynamics are called dynamics because they are constantly shifting. So knowing the chimps better definitely allows us to more accurately interpret the changes that might be occurring in the group. Some of the most important reasons to understand the chimps' relationships with each other are to identify triggers and to prevent aggressive encounters if we can. For example, two chimps may be displaying in a way that we've seen turn into a fight before. Uh, care staff could see that and take action by maybe scattering some food around to take the chimps' attention away from their frustrations. We aren't always able to interfere, uh, and sometimes we recognize that a pair of chimps just needs to work, it, work their issues out on their own without us. But knowing the chimps and their dynamics helps us to decipher when it is best to take action. When you're dealing with so many chimps with such varying personalities, you're going to have ones with different unique quirks. Knowing what these quirks are allows us not just to know the chimps on a more intimate level, but it can let us, uh, it can help us know what to give them when they need a little extra something, or it can help us know what not to do around the chimps. Knowing food preferences is quite valuable. Having an idea of a chimp's likes and dislikes can help us with medications. Knowing that a certain food might give us a better chance of successfully medicating a chimp that's a little picky, uh, it can uh, allow us also to know what is the most effective reinforcer for training. And it can help us to identify when a chimp might be feeling ill. For instance, Sophia might only take one of her two carrots in the evening when they're offered. But that's not really much cause for alarm for us because we know that she's not the biggest fan of carrots, so she usually will take one. But if she refuses a banana, then we would monitor her more, her more closely, knowing that she's typically very excited for bananas. Another kind of quirk to look for is whether they have unusual phobias or react negatively to certain stimuli. We all have people in our lives that have irrational fears or general discomfort with seemingly mundane things. It's not so different for chimps sometimes. For example, one of the females in Kareem's group, Sky, uh, she, she dislikes when the caregivers are wearing anything black, such as a black hat. She'll refuse to come down for her breakfast in the morning until that caregiver removes their hat. So although these things may be silly, uh, if the chimp clearly has an issue with it, then it is an issue, and we need to alter how we do things to accommodate that. Knowing a chimp's favorite spots and favorite group mates are both things that can help us know a chimp on a deeper level too. With the knowledge of favorite spots, we can have a good idea of where they are when we need to find them, and we can set up fun enrichment or toys in their favorite spots. With knowledge of a chimp's frequent companions, we can identify who good recovery buddies are uh, if the chimp needs to be uh, separated from the group due to an illness or medical procedure. This was the case uh, over a year ago when Latricia had a medical procedure which required her to be separated for a few days. We identified Jennifer as a great candidate to be her recovery buddy, and they seemed to really enjoy hanging out together in that time. If Latricia was by herself or paired with a chimp that she had less of a friendly rapport with, her recovery could have been much more stressful.
Now that we've identified why having a healthy relationship with the chimps is so important, let's go over what we as care staff do to facilitate those relationships. The first thing is to be consistent with providing the chimps with the different things that we give them. This means making sure that the chimps get their fair share and that they receive them in a timely manner. For instance, when we're giving them their breakfast and dinner, we give pieces of fruit and vegetables along with their nutri nutritious chow individually. So we need to make sure that every chimp receives their food before we move on to the next food item. Occasionally, there will be a chimp that doesn't feel like taking that food on that given day, and that's their choice. But we need to make sure that there's at least ample opportunity for them to come and receive it, and that their reluctance to get that food is not just due to the fear of another chimp stealing it. On the other hand, a chimp may be asking for their food while a chimp that we know will steal it from them is right next to them. You'd better believe if we tried to give them that food and it got stolen, they wouldn't blame themselves for losing it. And we wouldn't blame them either because we know better. So we need to be consistent with identifying the situations in which it is safe to hand a chimp their food. We also give them food throughout the day when we're cleaning their villas. So the chimps are aware of when it's been a little while between food items. And usually we'll put the food items in a room that we just clean to give them an opportunity to explore and forage in it. But if we know that cleaning is taking a particularly long time, we may need to scatter some food in the rooms that they're currently occupying. Now, outside of our roles of providing necessities like food, enrichment, and clean spaces for the chimps, we also want to have positive interactions with them. Playing is certainly an effective way of doing that, but we have to be safe about it. We do not directly touch the chimps, so we have other ways of having fun. We can play chase from room to room, sprinting around in front of each other and chasing each other. Uh, we can play tickle stick, which is where we take a small stick and use it as an artificial finger to groom the chimps or to lightly poke their bellies or sides to make them laugh. Some chimps like Haley will push a blanket through the mesh for us and initiate a game of tug of war. Even the smallest chimps that we have are incredibly strong. So we can be, it can be quite a workout for us. Or we can do simple things like dancing or juggling for them while they nod along in appreciation. All of these things serve to reinforce that pleasant relationship. Something that we like to do that might seem odd to a casual observer is to use chimp vocalizations. We make sure to use only positive vocalizations though, as ones such as an alarm bark or a scream might serve to stress the group out. But some examples would be to use food grunts around mealtimes to let them know that we have tasty food for them. An example of that is ah, 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 ah. Another would be to use a breathy pant, ah, 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 which we may use when we're playing. Uh, this is a noise that equates to laughter or expressing that you are non-threatening to your play partner. And of course, there are night calls, which go, whoo. Uh, we typically make these at the end of the day when we are leaving as kind of a good night to the chimps. Uh, sometimes they respond back, sometimes they don't. But these are calls that the chimps will make as it gets darker and closer to sleep time to let each other know that they're there when it's harder to see so. Interestingly, there have been a number of studies done that show that humans using positive chimp vocalization can result in a de decrease in stress behaviors. So it, uh, it is a important thing health-wise for them too. Finally, a positive demeanor can work wonders when you are in the presence of the chimps. They are well aware of our presence and they can feed off of our energy. Just like we've learned to read their behaviors and personalities, they have an understanding of how we typically behave. So if we're in a sour mood, the chimps might be confused or nervous because we're acting strange. If we were to be upset at a coworker and yell at them in front of the chimps, they might mirror that behavior and become more aggressive as a result. Personally, I've heard anecdotes from other facilities where a pair of coworkers weren't 
necessarily acting respectfully towards each other. Uh, and that resulted in one or more of the apes that they cared for acting more aggressively or less friendly towards one of the humans that they felt was threatening the other human that they liked. To put it in a relatable human sense, parents typically understand not to fight with each other in front of their children because that can have a serious impact on them. All it takes is one bad experience like that for a child to remember that for the rest of their lives. So the same could hold true for a chimp. So even on our toughest days, when a chimp is being quite obstinate or frustrating, it is our duty to deal with those frustrations privately and to not involve the chimps in it. While having a close relationship with a chimp can certainly be a good thing, a caregiver needs to be aware that becoming too close can have some negative effects on that chimp and its group mates. Giving a certain chimp an inordinate amount of interaction or attention can make that individual more concerned with humans rather than their chimpanzee group mates. This can cause stress behaviors when the caregiver leaves for the day or can result in tantrums if they feel like humans aren't paying them enough attention at the moment. For example, one of the chimps here, Marlin, has a very human-oriented personality, and he can become quite disruptive if he's had a lot of human interaction uh, recently. And then he obviously wants that co to continue. Since he's a high-ranking chimp in this group, his disruptive behavior can put some of the lower-ranking chimps on edge, and it might get some of the higher-ranking chimps riled up. This is a scenario that we don't want to foster, so we're especially conscious of how much we interact with Marlin. We certainly don't avoid him, but we are aware of how often and for what duration we interact with him. Another example of how an individual can be negatively impacted by a close relationship with a human is that as caregivers, we may not always be there. Whether we change jobs, retire, or if we're gone for a while due to illness or injury, that absence can cause stress behaviors to develop since a constant presence in a chimp's life has now gone away. By making sure that our individual relationship with a chimp is not dramatically closer than that of the other care staff, we can prevent such negative effects from manifesting due to our absence. We're only human, so we may feel a desire to have a special relationship with a chimp but we need to think of what's best for the chimps, not necessarily what will make us feel unique. On top of having an impact on individual chimps, there can also be negative impacts on a group when there's an unhealthy caregiver chimp relationship. When a chimp is spending too much time with a human, it can cause them to seem disconnected from the group, resulting in the group members shunning them to an extent. This situation was seen in a news story that some of you may have heard. At a Belgian zoo, a visitor had developed an unhealthy relationship with a chimp, visiting him all the time and taking up much of his attention. The visitor, in fact, referred to him affectionately as her boyfriend. The zoo made the decision to ban her from the zoo for continuing to occupy this chimp's time, citing that when the zoo is closed, the other chimpanzees would not interact with him and he would be all by himself. That's a reality that not many people would consider. And I'm sure that this woman believed that she was bringing nothing but joy to this animal. But as with many things, it's a lot more nuanced than that. So to wrap this all up, I'd like to present some main takeaways from this presentation. First of all, you can't expect to have a close relationship with a chimp in your care right when you start working with them. It can take a long time to develop those bonds and to build the trust that's needed. Just as you would not have familiarity with them, they would not have familiarity with you right away. All you can do is be attentive to the chimpanzees personalities and their individual needs and group dynamics, treat them with love and kindness and keep their best interests at the forefront of your mind. Which brings us to the next point. It's about what's best for the chimps, not what's best for the caregivers. Like we said in the previous slide, even with good intentions, you could be doing things that might be negatives for the chimps and their relationship to you. Just try to keep in mind, how will my actions impact the chimps, both in the short and the long term? Lastly, have fun. Obviously, it needs to be safe, fun, 
but identify what makes the chimps happy and excited and let that help build your bond with them. You'll almost definitely find that it'll enable you to have enjoyment as well as a sense of fulfillment. I know I sure feel fulfilled working for these chimps every day. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you learned a thing or two about how we do things here. Thank you so much, Alan. That was fantastic. So now's the time that if you have any questions, you can submit those questions in the comment section. So Alan, you mentioned trust in your presentation. Do you trust the chimps? That is a good question. Uh, we have a certain amount of trust in the chimps, but it is important to not have full trust in the chimps. Uh, like we said, we take uh, uh, we don't touch the chimps and that's because we take our safety very seriously. We know that these are wild animals and they are potentially dangerous. So we keep that in the forefront of our minds, but we do trust them in other ways. We trust them to uh, help us out when we're shifting. Uh, so if we need to get into a room to clean it, we can trust them to move into the other room and, uh, and not necessarily hold that room, although that does not always happen. There are sometimes chimps that uh, like to stay in one room and then we just have to accept that and try to get it later. Uh, and we can trust them to uh, do certain things like uh, show us injuries and stuff uh, due to the training that we've done that really helps to build all of that trust. Excellent, very good. Um, what are some other things that you have uh, trained the chimps to do? Well, uh, we basically train for medical uh, purposes. Uh, so we're not training them to do backflips. We're not training them to play ping pong with us or something like that. We are training them specifically so that we can help them. So body presentation of all sorts of parts of their body. Uh, we have different signals for that so that they know when to give us those things. And that's helpful for when they do get an injury so that they can hold that up to us and we can get a good look. Uh, that way we don't have to sedate them to look at their injuries. Uh, um, and that's very, very beneficial for both us and the chimps. Uh, we actually recently were able to uh, uh, give COVID vaccinations to our chimps. And uh, they uh, went through a long process of training and uh, you know, in order to give a, give a shot to a chimp, they, they need to trust you. So we did a long uh, process of doing that and we were very successful with it. And it makes us really happy that we're able to uh, further protect the chimps from, uh, from this virus. Excellent. And that leads into another question that just came in, which was, can the chimps get COVID? Yes, uh, we have been very fortunate and we've uh, we've tried our very best to make sure that they have not been exposed to this uh, since COVID started. But there have been cases at other places, uh, uh, different zoos and such uh, that have shown that chimps are able to get COVID. Uh, I believe in the Cases that those chimps were exposed to it, uh, all of them were able to survive, though. Good. Um, what, what is, uh, Alan, what is your most memorable interaction with a chimp? And if you, yeah, if you want to tell us, even if you have this specific chimp, if you wanted to share mm -hmm. uh, an interaction or a story with our, our guests. Uh, well, there are a number of different things. Uh, I would say... Uh, Armand in the Chimps Ahoy Villa, uh, he's a chimp that was uh, not very trusting of us when he first got here. Uh, and he would fill his mouth with water and spit it at us. And he would throw, uh, let's call it dirt. He would throw dirt at us uh, many, many times. And it was a slow process, but as he got to know us and how, as he got to trust us, he started to share more of his personality, be more happy around us, meet us at, at the mesh, nod in his head and acting real happy. He uh, uh, threw things a lot less at us and he uh, sometimes would fill his mouth with water, but instead of spitting a whole mouthful forcefully at us, 
he might just spit little tiny jets at us that we consider to be more of a sign of affection than uh, aggression. Uh, so it's it meant a lot to me when uh, when he really started seeing me as a uh, as a ally rather than uh, being unsure of what I'm what I'm bringing. Uh, so that was really nice. There's also a lot of times that you see a chimp that is not necessarily very concerned with humans, which is totally fine. They're uh, uh, it's it's great that they're more focused on their group and the dynamics, uh, but occasionally those chimps will still come down and be like, hey, come, come here, come play with me, I wanna play with you. And those are some really great moments that you can have that uh, really warm your heart. Awesome. Um, we have a guest that's asking if we allow any non-invasive behavioral research at the sanctuary. We do not. That's what I thought. All, all of it would be uh, observational and uh, we have a policy if we are considering research from an outside uh, uh, person or uh, uh, entity. When they send us their proposal, we one of the first things that we have to look at is one, uh, is it invasive? Is it going to be a negative for the chimps? And then if, if, uh, if that comes out clean, then we also have to know, is this, going, is this study going to directly benefit our chimps because we don't want them to be uh, uh, studied and uh, even just having a stranger out there watching them for something that actually won't uh, directly benefit them. So uh, the chimps are absolutely our first thought whenever any sort of study comes in. Great. Um, do the chimps get bored and what do we do to help with that? Well, I'm the perfect person to ask for that because I'm the uh, one of our facilitators of our enrichment committee. Uh, enrichment is one of the things that we uh, use most to make sure that they don't get bored. We give them a lot of different enrichment items and a bunch of different levels of complexity so that we can cater to the chimps that might not want to uh, tax themselves too much, but also that we can uh, challenge the chimps that are really wanting to wanting to do something and figure out different puzzles. Uh, so we have a lot of different things that we can give them. We have a lot of different structures and hanging things that we keep in their areas and out in the habitat. And then we also scatter a lot of uh, food to allow them to forage throughout the day and pick up bits of food, which is what they uh, would typically be doing in their active time out in the wild. Nice. Now you mentioned uh, Armand and how he would sometimes throw uh, dirt at you. Is there any type of specific training that you can do to help stop him from throwing uh, said dirt at you? That's a good question. Uh, one thing that you could do is uh, identify when he's about to. And uh, if he puts it back down, you can uh, give him a treat like a peanut or something. And that reinforces the behavior of uh, not throwing. Another thing is just uh, establishing that trust and uh, uh, making him know that we're not out there to get him and we're not a threat. We are just here to help. And uh, that's one thing that certainly helped with him throwing less. Uh, I, ideally, when there are natural behaviors like not throwing or like throwing, those kind of things are things that you can train for. Uh, you just need to identify the times that it's appropriate to give the reinforcer so that they're not getting confused about uh, what they're getting their treat for. Excellent. We've still got a few coming in. We've got a lot of great questions tonight. Um, do all chimps have brown or amber colored eyes? I believe so. Uh, I can't say that I have researched into that, but I can't think of any chimp that has, I've met that has not had that color eye. I certainly haven't met one with blue eyes, but that would be really, really interesting to see. I can't think of any either. Here's a question about grooming. Um, someone is asking if we participate in bathing or grooming the chimps, or is it just purely chimps grooming each other? 
Well, uh, the chimps are the best ones at grooming each other, that's for sure, and they, they do a very good job of that. Uh, as far as bathing, uh, that's not something that chimps naturally do in the wild, so, uh, so we don't uh, uh, try to bathe them or anything like that. If they, if they want to uh, get some water from their, from their fountains and uh, bathe themselves, we do have a few that uh, do hand-washing behaviors, which is kind of cool to see. Uh, but yeah, uh, they don't they don't naturally bathe themselves in the wild, so uh, so we just have to deal with the smell. Now we can groom them, uh, but like I said, it was it's uh, with a stick that we use as an artificial finger. So it's simulating grooming, but it's not as personal or in depth as say another chimpanzee might be able to do. They might go right up to their to their eyes and pick at their eyes or uh, uh, at any little tiny wounds that they might have, and we don't have that kind of dexterity with a with a stick, obviously. Excellent. We'll do maybe just one or two more. How about what has been your most rewarding experience while training and working with chimps? Uh, we've uh, we've shared this story a few times uh, at on social media, uh, but this is certainly something that. I've absolutely loved to be a part of, and that helps me know that I'm absolutely in the right in the right field. Uh, and that's uh, one of our chimps in Chimps Ahoy, Luke, who came here. He had a lot of uh, different stress behaviors, and he wasn't very trusting. He he was nervous a lot. Uh, but as we started started showing him that we were we were his allies he started to show a little bit more playfulness he started to come down and stop displaying as much uh he went out into the habitat which is what he uh he, he used to not even go close to the habitat and then once he got out there he really blossomed and he realized oh this is amazing uh he used to be really uncomfortable with change or with new people. Uh, so anytime uh, we might have a couple visitors uh, uh, walking around the uh, sanctuary, he get a little nervous. Now he's out and he is at the windows interacting with those visitors. He gets so happy with, uh, with all of us and gets really playful, wants us to groom him and, and everything. It's, I can't describe how amazing it is to witness that kind of turnaround. And that's exactly what we're here for. That's, that's exactly the kind of story that we, uh, that we hope to see in every one of our chimps. It definitely has been fun watching his transformation. Last question. What advice would you give somebody who would want to have your kind of a job? Well, there's a, uh, there's not too many, uh, positions in the in the chimp sanctuary world uh so i was fortunate enough to be able to uh, uh come right into this i uh originally was working at the cincinnati zoo uh in their primate department in a very limited capacity uh and then when i went to my master's program i actually worked at another chimpanzee sanctuary chimpanzee sanctuary northwest as a volunteer as an intern uh so just try to get some of that experience uh if you, if you can volunteer or intern at a zoo or at a sanctuary, uh, that's some really valuable stuff that you can bring towards an application if you wanted to uh, apply for one of these positions. Uh, certainly bring a lot of empathy and a lot of passion because that's, uh, that's what we're all here for. We all want to do what's best for the chimps and we, we're all so passionate about it. Fantastic. Thanks, Alan. And thanks everybody for joining us this evening. We're sorry if we didn't get to all of the questions, but know that you can send your questions in and email them to events at projectchimps.org and we can make sure to get to each and every one of them. Most importantly, thank you guys for joining us this evening. It costs $22,000 a year to care for each one of our 81 chimpanzees, and we are dependent on supporters like you to succeed in our goal of bringing all of the new Iberia chimps here to their forever home. 
Go to the support tab on our website to check out our donation and sponsorship opportunities. You can find us online at www.projectchimps.org. Until next time, thank you so much for your continued support of the chimps. We couldn't do it without you.